When I do talks to a live audience, the most common question I get asked is this, how is this useful? It seems like pure maths is all about playing with numbers and it's got no real use in the, in the real world. In time I might explore this idea of the usefulness of pure maths in more detail, but in the meantime I set myself the task of finding a good example of pure maths being useful. But I'm not satisfied with just a little bit useful to a little group of people. I want an example of pure maths that is very, very useful to very, very many people. For centuries, prime numbers were only of interest to mathematicians. They certainly weren't useful to anyone else, ex actually except for possibly a few evolutionary biologists. But in the 1970s, that all changed. You see, for thousands of years, sending coded messages has always had a big problem. If someone knew how to encode a message, they could work out how to decode the message. You might say that if you had the lock to code a message, then the key to decode the message was attached to the lock. If everyone knew how to send you a coded message, then everyone knew how to decode the message. Eventually I'll probably make some more videos to explain the whole story about coding using prime numbers. Hence the part one in the title. The good news though is that if you only watch part one, this video, you will start to understand how prime numbers are used in internet security. For many people, part one will be sufficient. Amazingly, in the next 10 minutes, you will end up knowing how prime numbers are used every day in the internet transactions that you and your friends and family make. So let's set the scene. I want to buy a plane ticket to a holiday destination. I want to instruct my bank to pay the airline for the ticket. Here's how it might look. I want the bank to take $120 from my account number 86999 and pay it to the airline's account number 35353. My password with the bank is 5174. So I want to send all of this information to the bank. The bank and I want to make sure that if someone intercepts the encoded message, that they can't decode the message. Now I'm going to use the encryption on the bank's site. This is on the bank's website, so anyone with some computer skills could possibly work out how it operates. But I'll go one step further. Let's assume that the bank explains exactly how to encode a message. It's right there in all detail on their website. To understand how prime numbers fit in, we only need to understand one idea, the Euler totient function, sometimes called the phi function. We give the Euler totient function this symbol normally, it's the Greek letter phi, but I'm just going to use plain English and write phi n. Phi n is a function, it's a bit like a factory. You input a number n and it outputs the result, which we call phi n. We can understand phi n by looking at some examples. What is phi 8? Well, we look at all the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. We count numbers that, whose only shared divisor with the number 8 is the number 1. Or if you like, we count numbers who only share one divisor with the number 8. So think about the number 3. The only numbers that divide 3 are 1 and 3. The numbers that divide 8 are 1, 2, 4 and 8. So 3 and 8 share only one divisor, and it turns out to be the number 1. So we will put a tick against 3, and we will count it when we work out phi 8. Now think about the number 4. 1, 2 and 4 divides 4, and 1, 2, 4 and 8 divides 8. So 4 and 8 share many divisors. So we don't need to count 4. What about 6? Well, 6 and 8 share two divisors, 1 and 2. So we will put a cross against 6 and we'll not count it in phi 8. So here's how it looks after examining each number. We count up that there are four numbers that only share the divisor 1. These are 1, 3, 5 and 7. There are four of those numbers, so phi of 8 equals 4. 
Let's do another example. What about 7? What is phi 7? Well, we look at the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Now, the only divisors of 7 are 1 and 7 in itself. So the numbers that share only one divisor with the number 7 are all the numbers except the number 7 itself. So 5, 7 equals 6. You might have noticed that prime numbers like 7 are special. The only numbers that divide a prime are 1 and the prime number itself. So if we look at all the numbers less than or equal to the prime, then all those numbers except the prime number itself will share only one divisor. So to work out the, the phi of a prime number is easy. We just take off 1. 5, 5 equals 4. 5, 23 equals 22. 5, 197 equals 196. What about numbers that aren't prime? Well, we only need to worry about numbers that are multipl multiplication of two primes. So a number like 6, which is 2 times 3, or 85, which is 5 by 17. It turns out there is a formula for the phi of such a number. If we multiply two primes, p and q, together, then phi of p times q equals p minus 1 times q minus 1. The proof is not too difficult. Have a look at the accompanying PDF if you're interested. But let's just try and see how it works. What is 515? Well, 515 equals phi of 5 times 3. Then we use the formula and say that that equals 5 minus 1 times 3 minus 1, and that equals 8. Let's, let's list the 8 numbers that only share one divisor with 15 and check. Here they are 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 11, 13, 14. Yes, there are 8 numbers. Phew, the formula works. It's not the end of the mathematical world as we know it. OK, so how does this phi function help us? Well, around the 1970s, some mathematicians worked out how to encode a message using the product of two prime numbers and how to decode the message using the phi function of the product of those two numbers. If you want to understand how the encoding and decoding works, you would need to watch part two when I make it. But today we'll just concentrate on how this magically allows messages to be encoded using a publicly known encoding program, but only to be decoded by, in our case, the bank. So let's use an example. The bank picks the numbers 23 and 37. It multiplies them together to get 851. We can regard this as the encoding key. This is put on the bank's website. The bank knows the phi formula I showed you before. So it works out that phi of 851 equals phi of 23 by 37 equals 23 minus 1 times 37 minus 1 equals 22 by 36 equals 792. So the decoding key is 792. So I get onto the bank's website and encode the account numbers, the amount and my password using the encoding key of 851. And this gives me the following coded messages. My account number has been encoded from 120 to 1687. My password has been encoded from 5174 to 90435. And I can uh, do the other, the other numbers as well. So the encoded message travels down the wires and the wireless spectrum to the bank. If anyone intercepts the message, they can't decode it because they don't know the decoding key. They know the coding key is 851, that's on the bank's website, but they don't know the decoding key, 792. So the message gets to the bank, the bank knows the decoding key is 792, so they decode the message. So then they pay the airline and I get to go on holidays. Now, if you've been following what I've done so far, you might say, hold on, anybody can work out the decoding key. They know the encoding key is 851. It's on the bank's website. So they just work out that 851 equals 23 by 37, and then it's easy to work out the decoding key. 
But here's the catch. Here's the catch. The bank doesn't use small prime numbers like 23 and 37. It uses prime numbers that are say 125 digits long. It's not too hard using modern computers to find 125 digit numbers that are prime. The bank multiplies two of them together to get a number that is about 250 digits long. So if someone wants to the decode key, they will have to find the two numbers that multiply together to get this 250 digit long number. And that is beyond modern day computers. It would take too long. Maybe millions of years. In fact, even if you got every computer in the world working on this problem, it would still take too long to be useful. So this internet security works because it is easy to find huge prime numbers, but it is very, very difficult to factor large numbers. Or if you want to put it another way, it's very, very difficult to find the divisors of very big numbers. So let me give you an example. Here's a 125 digit prime number. Here's another 150 digit number. It's also prime. When I multiply them together, I get this number. Now it would be too difficult for anyone to work out from this 250 digit number the two prime numbers that I started with. I'll put it even more directly. Here is another 250 digit number. Drop me an email if you can find the two numbers I multiplied to get it. I'll give you credit on my YouTube channel. So to summarise, we tell everyone how to encode a message by giving them an encoding number, safe in the knowledge that only we can decode the message by calculating the five function of the encoding number. I hope you now understand how much internet security is based on prime numbers. You or one of your family or friends has probably transacted on the internet today without knowing that prime numbers have enabled it to be done securely. I hope you've enjoyed seeing one way that pure maths is useful.